I have to say I am truly blessed. While I have my makeup line now 23 years that I've created, long before that, I'm proud to say, I did television makeup um, for both TV and film. And one of my proudest moments was working with some of the great lates, the legends and the luminaries. And I have stories, you know, that when I did their makeup, I didn't realize were gonna become stories that would last me a lifetime. I was young, I was just running and trying to catch up and get ahead of myself. So I have archived um, a number of the celebrities that I've been so fortunate to have worked with. And um, right off the bat, mm, one of them was Audrey Hepburn. And when I was told that I would be doing Audrey Hepburn's makeup, I thought, oh my gosh, how can I possibly measure up to the way we remember Audrey Hepburn looking? But then I remembered, you know, this was a different time in her life and she actually was um, ailing at that time. And so I did a very classic makeup. I certainly didn't do breakfast at Tiffany's, but it was just about evening out her skin and giving her a little color on her cheek and lip. And then just putting a, a little bit of liner to create that classic eye so that you saw her eye and filling in her brow a little bit. It wasn't about mascara or lashes. This was not about glamor. Boy, oh boy. And she was so kind and lovely. What an elegant lady. Okay, this may scare some people because it actually scared him. So Paul Newman, this was um, a time I was doing him for an interview in New York. Beside, you know, classic, beautiful ingenues, I did a lot of celebrity men. And one of the things was, was that, you know, it's actually harder to do a man and make him not look like he's made up. Um, so I sort of, sometimes I fudged it, sometimes... It was like I did very little, and then sometimes I did a little too much, and that was what happened in this case. I painted his whole face with pancake makeup, and when I looked at it, I stepped away and I looked back, I thought, my gosh, did I do too much of a light color? I don't know if I, I missed something. Maybe he won't notice, and guess what? He did. So he was very soft-spoken, and he had that dry sense of humor, and he looked up in the mirror, and he kind of went, and looked over at me and then went, what do you think? And I went, um, I think you look great. And <laughs> he said, you think it's a little light? And I was like, maybe just a little. So I actually toned it down, but he was a perfect gentleman and I was a perfect embarrassment. Just saying. Okay, another late great. How many of you recognize? the beautiful Ginger Rogers. So I have two quick stories here. Again, this was later in their lives um, when they were being interviewed for the work that they'd done. Um, I was so nervous doing her makeup. She was very intimidating, a very strong force. And not because she said anything, just you felt her presence. And I remember I was starting to do her eyebrow, fill in her eyebrow, and she went like this to me. And I went, um, I think... I was trying to figure out what that meant, and then I realized she wanted to do her own eyebrow. And I was like more than happy to let her do it because I didn't want to make any mistakes. So I handed her the eyebrow pencil, and she was a bit shaky, and she started filling it in, and it was not good, but I didn't care because I wasn't going to get in trouble. And actually, I got paid the biggest compliment of my life. She said, you're going to be very special one day. And I said, what? Yes, you're going to be a very talented makeup artist because you let me do what I wanted to do. And most makeup artists don't let me do that. And she should only know that the reason why I did it was because I didn't want to do it. But then I made sure that my leg touched her leg. I thought if I can get a little Ginger Rogers leg rub off on me, maybe uh, I could say I had a little Ginger Roger leg action. Wait, that didn't sound right. But you know what I'm talking about. I just wanted to make sure I got to touch that woman, Angela Lansbury. Here was another woman I revered. Um, again, not meant to be a glamour puss, so I didn't do that kind of makeup. This was for TV, for film, and I was in Los Angeles, and I did very, it was about evening out the skin and creating shape. That's why contour and highlighting has been part of what I've been doing for so long. It was really about bringing out the shape of her face, her cheek, her eye, her lip. That was my time with Angela, and she was so kind. She was one of the nicest women. Oh, okay. Charlton Heston. My mother loved Charlton Heston. 
Uh, I, I wonder how many of you know who I'm even talking about with all these ingenues. I hope most of you do. Charlton Heston, I have a funny, real quick funny story. He came to the studio early and we were in Los Angeles and I was on set doing something else and someone said, go, just go sit in the green room with him. Just go entertain him. Now, I was in my like early 20s. I thought, what am I going to talk to Charlton Heston about? I don't remember his body of work. I didn't remember movies. I didn't study up. So I sat there and I just kind of looked at him and I went, did you have a lot of traffic getting here? And I got to tell you something. He made fun of me all day for that. Yeah, it's Los Angeles. I had a lot of traffic getting here. I didn't know what else to say. I had to fill in the time. So that was my Charlton Heston story. What can I tell you? This one, most embarrassed about. Now he doesn't know, but I'm embarrassed for myself. Jimmy Stewart. I mean, does it get better than that? I mean, I really, it's funny because I always mix up Jimmy Stewart and Henry Fonda, who I've also made up. Jimmy Stewart at this time was very soft-spoken and spoke very low and very slow. So when you go into a room and you're filming, lights, you know, camera, no talking. Shut off the air, shut off everything. I don't want anybody talking in here. So I'm sitting on the floor because I have to make sure I'm just doing a little powder if they perspire, making sure the brows are in place. But I'm sitting down and there's no talking. I had a little jet lag. I was a little tired. What do you do in a case like that? You take a little nap. I took a little nap. So my nap included a lot of snoring. I got in a lot of trouble. Well, all of a sudden, cut! Who's snoring in here? It was me. He didn't see, so it didn't matter. I just got to do his makeup, but everybody else knew I snored except him. I just wanted to share some of my stories with you. Some I want to recollect, some I want to forget, <laughs> but I really just wanted to share them with you. And to say that now I'm living my new dream. These last 23 years, I'm creating products, doing fun things just for you.